Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. Matthew 24 and World News. You're going to find how amazing the prophecies of Jesus are and how that in Matthew 24, the foundation reaches clear back to the prophet Daniel. So let's review a couple of scriptures back in Daniel 12. Verse 1, There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even until that time. Then down here in verse 4 is another description of, of the end times, but also to Daniel that he wouldn't understand it and he wouldn't know when they would take place because the details would be given later, almost 600 years after Daniel. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end, Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And is that not a hallmark of our time today? Yes, indeed, it really, really is. Now, how are we going to understand? That's important. Because a lot of people think they understand prophecy, but they don't understand prophecy and they have timing all out of whack because they do not keep the Sabbath and holy days of God, which is a sidebar. You need to understand reveals the plan of God and the timing of these most important prophecies. So you need our book, The Plan of God Revealed by His Sabbath and holy days. There's a key to understanding the prophecies. We'll see that in just a minute. But let's finish what was told Daniel in verse 9. And he said, that is the angel talking to Daniel, you go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white, and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. Now, that's quite a statement, isn't it? Who are the wicked? The majority of people in the world. Now, notice this next phrase, but the wise shall understand. Who are the wise? Now, there are a lot of important people that think they're wise, and they think they know a lot of things, and they think they're able to understand the Scriptures, but they can't. Why is that? What is the secret for those who are wise that they may understand? Now, it's not a matter of what you're IQ score is, or how brilliant you may be. That's not the criteria. Here in Psalm 111 and verse 10, we are given the key. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Do you fear God? That is, do you fear to go against God? Now, if you have the proper fear of God, you will also have the proper love of God, and you will have the faith of God, and God will give you understanding. So that's the beginning. Many people haven't even come to the first step toward understanding these things. How about you? One of the most important things in understanding the Bible is how do you study the Bible? Now, we have got all of that ready for you. The 14 keys to understanding the Bible. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding 
have all those who do his commandments. Now, question. Do you do the commandments of God? Do you know the commandments of God? Many people profess to believe in God. Many people profess that they love God. Many people profess that they do the will of God, but most of them do not keep the commandments of God. Do you even know the commandments of God? They all start out with the Ten Commandments. After the Supreme Court's week of high-profile decisions, Oklahoma's High Court made a stir of its own in a ruling that had a group of self-proclaimed Satanists and an ordained Baptist minister celebrating. The Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled Tuesday that the state must remove a six-foot-tall granite monument of the Ten Commandments from its capital because it violates the state's constitutional ban against the use of public funds or property to benefit a religion. The decision came after years of controversy and legal battles. The monument supporters include prominent figures in the state, including Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon and members of the state's legislature. Now, a lot of people hate the law of God because they want to do their own way. But if you do your own way and do your own thing, you belong to the group of the wicked, not the wise. Now, let's come to Matthew 24. And let's see how this fits right into the news and the world events that are going on today. Now, Jesus gave this about 600 years after Daniel. And now we're almost 2,000 years to the 2,000-year anniversary of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That is in 2030 coming up in 10 years. But notice what Jesus said. Verse 35, the heaven and the earth shall pass away, and they will, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Now notice the rest of this sentence. But my words shall never pass away. In other words, doesn't matter what people think about the words of Jesus Christ. What Jesus said is true. And in John 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. Now, those are really defining scriptures you need to understand and start applying them to your life. Do you want to know God? Do you want to know what he's doing? Do you want to know how you can have contact with God? How you can have his spirit? All of those things we have right here on Church at Home. So you go through our list of that we have right on the site and go through many of these series that we have talking about every one of these things. This is important because when you look at the world, it almost looks like it's ready to collapse inside, doesn't it? So what are you going to do? All right, let's see what else Jesus said. Verse 37, But as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days that were before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Now, that's quite a thing to read because God sent all of the animals and Noah put them into the ark. And Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives went into the ark and God sealed it. And the rain did not begin for seven days. Now just think of all the people outside the ark that gathered there to ridicule Noah and the ark. But on the seventh day it began to rain and the fountains of the deep were broken up and 
plot started. Now, Jesus is telling us it's going to be likewise in the time of the end. So let's see and put this all together in Matthew 24. Now, let's understand something. The prophecies contained in Matthew 24, and there are a lot of them contained here, begin with Jesus' explanation to his disciples, and it ends in his return. So that's the whole span of history from the time of Jesus, who was here on his first coming, to his death, resurrection, and second coming. And we will see there's only one important clue that will tell us that we're really close. So let's begin in verse 1. And after going out, Jesus departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to point out the buildings of the temple. But Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Now they were up on the Mount of Olives, which is across the Kidron Valley where the temple was. So they were sitting there looking at the temple, and the temple was one of the most beautiful buildings at the time. And from the bottom of the Kidron Valley to the very top of the temple area and on top of the wall was about 450 feet. And they had beautiful, huge rocks, stones, cut stones that went from the valley clear up to the temple area. And the temple area was overlaid with huge stone. So let's see what he says about it. Truly I say to you, there shall not be left here even a stone upon a stone that shall not be thrown down. Now then, a little sidebar on understanding here. When you look at the Western Wailing Wall, there in Jerusalem, right near where the Mosque of Omar is. And what do you see? You see huge stones stacked upon one another. Now Jesus' statement is, there shall not be one stone left upon a stone that shall not be thrown down. And yet the Jews claim where the Mosque of Omar is, is where they're going to build their temple. Not so. You need to ask for our DVD showing where the proper temple area actually is located. Now, what the Mosque of Omar sits on? All those stones? Are they thrown down? No, they're still there. Why are they still there? Because where the Mosque of Omar is, that used to be the Roman fortress of Antonio. And that's where the Roman garrison of 5,000 or more troops lived. And then they had a causeway that they walked on to go down and guard the temple area because the Jews were known to have many riots. So you think about that. Isn't it amazing that God's word is so absolutely true that the Jews do not know where the true temple area actually is? Now, again, remember, for about a thousand years, Jews were not in Israel. And when they came back from around the time of medieval times, they started calling this the Temple Mount. But the interesting part is Yeshua said, not one stone will be left upon another stone. 
And Josephus confirms that. And Josephus says literally those words. He says, Jerusalem was so destroyed that there was not a stone left upon a stone. There are in that complex 10,000 Herodian stones. 10,000. That is exactly the same size of every Roman fort. 600 by 1,200. So we believe firmly that this is the, the Fort Antonia. When Josephus talks about Fort Antonia, he says Fort Antonia is called the rock because of the large protruding rock that's coming out from underneath it. Indications are that the temple was further south than what we think here. And if you really think about this, it makes a lot of sense because if you're the Romans and you take over this area, are you gonna give the high point and a 35 acre platform to the Jewish temple? When you've got 10,000 soldiers here? No, the high point is gonna be your fort and the temple is going to be below that fort. That's why the fortress was high. It could look down over the temple. It could guard the city, and it could guard the temple at the same time. Now, they will be revealed where to put the temple when the time of the Jewish temple to be built is come. So let's read on and see what else he says here. Verse 3. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him alone, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and the completion of the age? That's quite a question. Men have been wondering what it is. Some people have said, well, all of these things occurred during the time of Jesus, and that it has all been fulfilled. Question, has Jesus returned? No. So therefore, they have not all been fulfilled. So let's go on. Verse 4, then Jesus answered and said to them, be on guard so that no one deceives you. Now, that's a keynote of all the New Testament because there are many brands of fake Christianity today with lying wonders, with false prophecies, with false days to observe. That's contemporary Christianity. Verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, They'll say, oh, this is Jesus, and they shall deceive many. And the many means the majority of people. How about you? Have you ever asked the question, have I been deceived? Now stop and think about it. Because a lot of people accept some very good sounding things because it appeals to human nature and they think that they know they think that they have the truth but what did we read a good understanding have those who keep his commandments how many people in the world are keeping the commandments of god and you need to ask yourself the question do you and if you don't why don't you? Then he says, verse 6, You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nightly news, right? Conflicts everywhere. Threatening of war. Iran. North Korea. Wars being fought. Afghanistan. Middle East. Yemen. And other places. So he says, see that you do not let these things disturb you, for it is necessary that all these things take place, but the end is not yet. So what we are looking at here is what he's describing is all of these events until we get to one particular event are cyclical, and they've been happening down through history, repeated over and over again, but they never come to the final step. 
the final thing that Jesus said. So therefore, there have been many mistakes in understanding when Jesus is going to return. And how many have said Jesus is going to return? Well, I can tell you from, from what I have lived through, we heard 1975, we heard then 1988, and then 1989, and then 1997, and then 2004. And Jesus didn't return in any of those. One man prophesied a couple years ago that it would be in May, and it didn't happen. So he revised it to October, and it didn't happen. And this man, who is a well-known religious leader on television, died. He was the preacher behind those end-of-the-world predictions. 97% of the people God will destroy. I don't, don't believe in such Judgment days that kept coming and going. The world did not end. We are still... But now the world has ended for Harold Camping long after he predicted it would. Predictions so wrong that he once said reporters would be thinking, I'm ready to shoot myself or go on a booze trip. He was wrong in 1994, and again when he announced the end would come May 21st, 2011. One follower spent $140,000 on ads warning of Judgment Day. That's your life savings. A good chunk of it. A documentary filmmaker followed Robert Fitzpatrick to Times Square to ring in the end of the world. And of course, nothing happened. I didn't water my plants. I didn't do the dishes before I left. I didn't expect to be going back home. Jesus still hasn't come. Verse 7, Nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in different places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Now, how bad will it get? Now, I want to briefly review 10 things that are happening right now that are fulfilling what Jesus said. Number one, in Eastern Africa, armies of locusts eating everything, devouring entire farms in Africa in as little as 30 seconds. These swarms are spreading throughout the Middle East, and now they have learned that they have come even to the border of China. They're so frightening, they're mentioned in the scriptures as divine punishment. Locusts have been harbingers of doom from time immemorial. Notorious they may be, but this is exceptional. It's 70 years since Kenya witnessed these sights and signs. Number two, extremely bizarre weather patterns. And we've seen that the last couple of years. And now you need to understand something we are approaching a time that is called a solar minimum. And that is that there are very few sunspots on the sun. And when that happens, it gets cooler, not warmer, and it gets wetter and colder and not hotter. Meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen explains. This is video of the sun that I shot today. Notice the even and unblemished orange surface. No sunspots which appear when the sun's magnetic field is active. In fact, the sun has been relatively spot free for more than a year, an indication that it's nearing solar minimum. The number of spots waxes and wanes over the course of about 11 years. Scott McIntosh is the director of the High Altitude Observatory and currently the interim director of all NCAR. He says we are about 10 years into the current sunspot cycle, which even at its peak in 2014 was the weakest in nearly 100 years. So it's been trending down by about 25% per decade. And now we have a Colorado high country benefiting from a cold and snowy fall, the most early season snow cover across North America in 50 years, and global temperatures dropping slightly over the past two years. 
So what's going to happen if they don't have some solar flares here pretty quick and we are in the solar minimum, we are due for cold summers and we are due for wet springs? Number three, unprecedented flooding. We've seen that and it's still going on. Across parts of the South, 10 million people are under flood warnings across 15 states, including Tennessee, where wide stretches of Hardin County are submerged. Number four, major earthquakes. One that recently occurred is 7.7 .7 near Jamaica, and that shook the whole Caribbean area. And what happens when there are earthquakes? Remember the one in Japan that caused the tremendous tsunami? Well, that's going to be repeated again, and it happened in Indonesia too, didn't it? Number five, unusual volcanic eruptions. They've had some in Italy. They've had some in Indonesia. So keep your eyes on those. Number six, the coronavirus. Now they don't even know what it is, but you know it's got to be very deadly from the way the Chinese are reacting, and now it's spreading to other countries. And it's almost running wild in Italy and Iran. What's going to happen? That has shut down a lot of economic activity, and some people say that if it keeps going, then in three months, the businesses in China are going to run out of cash. So let's see what happens. Number seven, the African swine fever or pig Ebola. That has already wiped out millions of swines in China. They had to kill 147 million hogs. Number eight, a new swine flu, the H1N1. Unlike the African swine flu, the N1H1 can actually kill humans. In fact, it has already killed more people outside of China than a coronavirus outbreak has. Number nine, H5N1 bird flu has caused a massive scare among a number of years ago. Now it is experiencing a stunning resurgence. China has had to kill thousands of chickens. Another flu. Isn't that interesting? How these flus come about? Now, they also know that many of them are attached to animals and most of them are animals that God said, don't eat. You need our book on clean and unclean meats. Maybe if you get that, you'll find out why you've been having sickness. Number 10, another one, an H5N8 bird flu. That's different from the other one. Now that's been reported in Germany. What's going to happen with all of these things? Now remember, Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows. And those have happened in cycles down through time. And many people have thought that Jesus is going to return because all of these things were happening. And yet, he didn't return during any of those events. Now, let me tell you, this is a fantastic book you need to read, The Appointed Times of Jesus the Messiah. So in the next segment, we're going to cover what event to look for that tells us the time is really, really short. So once again, Thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Calder saying, so long, everyone. <laughs>